There we go. I felt like it didn't go all the way up as much as I'd like. Well, I have such a treat here today. We have Fausto. And Fausto is a beautiful black colored French bulldog, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do a little checkup on you today. And this is Claudio and Nancy. Nancy. And they're originally from Chile, but live in Houston, Texas, right? For 30 years. Yeah. And do you live in Houston, Texas, or just visiting them? <laughs> no. They had a concern because um, Fausto, well, does it make a clicking noise? I am teaching him to sit down. Okay, good. And I normally touch here and say, okay, sit. Mm -hmm. When he do that, I feel like in my hand, I feel like I click. So you touch his rear to like uh, guide uh, him? Uh, uh, yes. And you feel click, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying that sometimes he gets up and he limps or walks slowly? And slowly, or, when or, he wake up in the... Which is unusual for an eight-month-old, right? We would expect that from a senior dog, but an eight-month-old, we, we worry. Like, why is he yeah. moving slowly? I move slowly when I wake up, but I'm more of a senior dog, and he's a little baby. Yeah, a little yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sharing with them, uh, you know, just a concern to be aware of, and I'd like to talk about this because a lot of people that tune in have especially because you are a French Bulldog, but I have this uh, list called the Incidences of Hip Dysplasia, and it has Bulldogs. I know you're not a, you're a French Bulldog. There's a 72% chance as a Bulldog to have hip dysplasia. French Bulldogs, that's you, right? You're a French Bulldog? Okay, 31%. Uh, German Shepherds, everybody thinks German Shepherds get them the most. They actually don't. German Shepherds are, are at 22%. So I'm uh, not saying that that just because her hip has been weird and clicking a little bit, um, him, him. I'm just saying uh, that they should know about it. What I always tell my patients and their families, he's only eight months old, but it wouldn't be bad at this time or in the next couple of months to uh, try to get an x-ray of the hips. Even if he doesn't have anything evident, sometimes the vet can say, I see a little something maybe. And that's okay because the dog's young. And then you hold on to that x-ray and I would even put it on your own desktop on your computer because let's say you move or you change vets or for whatever reason you lose it and you're using that as a reference point. So then you maybe do one at three years if your dog is in the top 20 on this list. Yeah. And let's now give him a checkup and I'm going to interact with him like he uh, doesn't have hip dysplasia. I'm going to just give him a full body checkup and I'm also going to see if maybe I can help his immediate hip issue that's clicking and being not having the symmetry or alignment that he needs right now, and I'm gonna see if I can improve that right on the spot. Let's get started. Perfect. I just love you, you're such a great, this is yeah, such a beautiful dog. You're such a good guy. All right, may I work with you today? I always like to ask, because I think they can tell if I'm respectful and asking if I can come be in their space. Is it okay if I work with you? What do you think of that? Can I work with you? Okay, you're a good guy. All right. Is it okay if I work? Yes, absolutely. With Fausto? Okay. Let's start up here. I know we're going down to the rear end, but I like to start up top. And let's just bring your head all the way up, because dogs should be able to go all the way up and all the way down. I felt like it didn't go all the way up as much as I'd like. Like it got a little stiff at the top. And then all the way down. I just slipped a kiss in. Was that okay? Yeah. I didn't ask you if I could kiss you. He said, you asked if you could work with me. He didn't ask if you could kiss me on the lips. So I guess I really went across the boundaries, right? That was not really nice. So let's go all the way to the left. But I challenge you watching, you would have done the same. You would have kissed him on the lips too at that moment. So here's right lateral flexion, left lateral flexion. They feel even. Sometimes they don't laterally flex as well. But a dog and a horse should be able to touch their nose to the shoulder pretty easily. And I'm also comparing bilaterally. So going to the right and going to the left is the same. Let's say one side is 40% less than the other side, then that's not a good outcome of that range of motion test. But you did well. And now I'm gonna go down where we bring your nose down. And you know, we need that when we're eating, right? Going down to the food. And I just don't like all the way up here. It just gets stiff. Here, you try it. Okay, so you're gonna support gently and bring his nose up. Oh. Do you see it gets stiff? Yeah, yeah. 
Now, especially a young dog, the nose should come all the way up to the yeah. ceiling, mm -hmm. but he doesn't like going past there. So I, I think that is a little finding that we have. So I, I might be able to help you right now with that, okay? Would that be okay if we just do that spot? Let's do, what are we gonna do? We're gonna come around. You keep him over here. Okay. I'm gonna come around. And there's a couple of moves I can do here. One is called a inferior atlas. So we're gonna bring it back superior. And I'm gonna take the atlas and flip it. Then I'm gonna come in to posterior arch atlas. There we go. Now I'm gonna use this machine to follow up and percuss it. This, um, when it's on full speed, it's 12 or 13 pulses per second. So I'm gonna come again on the atlas. Let's bring it, you continue to bring them up. Okay. Got it. There we go. A little better. And that's something you could stretch at home. You yeah, yeah, we'll practice do it, yeah. that a little bit. But I think I got some of it to release, okay. and I think also it's part of its flexibility. Okay, so I'm coming up and down the neck. I'm massaging. I'm mobilizing at the base of the neck. I'm looking for misalignments or rotation in the cervicals. They have seven bones in the neck, so do we. They have 13 in this area, the thoracics or dorsal, and we have 12. They have seven in the lower back, we have five. And now I'm gonna come between the shoulder blades. So this is T3, mm -hmm. third dorsal or third thoracic. And there's a tight one here, so I'm gonna adjust this. There it goes. Ooh, you hear that click? Yes, yeah. made a little click. Okay, good for you. And we're working down. I didn't see anything else in the neck, so we're okay. gonna leave the neck. Okay. Just that top bone was tight. Right. But that's a very important bone, the top bone. It's called the atlas, or the first cervical. Okay. It's the top, yeah, right yeah, up in top. here. Mm -hmm. It's very important for everybody. Horses, dogs, people, every animal. And the reason is it's so neurologically connected to the brain mm -hmm. and the brain stem and the spinal cord. So when there's tension there, it creates a lot of tension throughout the whole body. Okay. I'm just... Here's one here. There we go. That's a tight spot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Good boy. Now we're gonna check range of motion of the legs. Good boy. So come around here, um, Nancy, come look. And you guys can come with the camera. So look how the left leg is short. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, like a centimeter or two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see right there where it's touching? Yeah. So that's a misalignment. And that's coming not from the legs, but from the hip. So I'm up on the hip here. I might change here. And I'm going to adjust it. One more. There we go. Let's look now. He's not relaxing, so. They're even though, do you see? Yeah. Better, right? Yeah, yeah. better, yeah. Yeah. It was the back left. Yeah, back left. Good. Who doesn't love this machine? Sorry, Blue. It doesn't have big tail, but I'm going to get in on it a little bit, move the base of the tail. So where the base or the coccyx joins the apex of the sacrum, the sacrum has kind of a triangular shape to it. And the top of the sacrum is called the base. The tip of the sacrum is called the apex. Then the coccygeal segments start, but he only has a few and then the tail ends. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm in there just to mobilize it. So I'm contacting the top of the coccyx where it meets the sacrum. And I'm just seeing what that's like because sometimes that can be traumatized when a dog's tail is docked. And it's okay. And he's letting me work now. Another thing you can do is you could really massage the hips a lot throughout his whole yeah. life. Yeah. I made a course called How to Massage Your Dog. I just made a new online course called How to Massage Your Own Dog. And a dog like this wouldn't be bad to just every day 
for even two minutes. Look what I'm doing with the thumbs. Mm -hmm. You know, let's take your arm, right? You're in there like this, okay. into, the, into the butt and the glutes. Okay. And you, you'll start to learn, oh, right there, like is there, there's one right there, right? <laughs> so we start doing that. And he'll, again, just like you, he lets you brush his teeth, he'll also let you do yeah. this. He's letting me do it right now, and he just met me. So I'm, I'm doing a little petrissage here, and that's a technique I teach, petrissage. And then there's effleurage, which is more stroking. And then there's tapotement or tapping. You can also mobilize the leg where we bring the leg long, we bring it forward, we bring it up, we bring it forward, we bring it back, we bring it out, we bring it in, we roll it, right? So there's just motion that wow. you can do. You know, and I'm just working this. You know, you gotta love this. Who wouldn't just love this, right? And I don't have to know the names of these muscles to do this. It's so easy. Yeah. And look, he's letting me do it. <laughs> can shake it a little bit. I can stretch this leg back now. He's gonna give it to me now. Look at the beautiful extension, because I loosened it up. Remember, he was guarded before. Guarded means like he won't let me touch it. Are you relaxed? He's, he loves this. Because it's not in pain anymore. Good. You're such a good dog. See? See? No, yeah. Did it make the noise? A little bit in this side, yes. But on the right? Now in this one. This one, nothing. Nothing on the left. Okay, I guess we have a little more work to do. But you didn't feel it on the left? No, nothing And that's here. where we work. So let's do a little more. All right, I have more work to do. So I'm going to massage this. But I'm also going to bring the leg up. Good. Got that to move a little bit. Good boy. I'm gonna work into the glute. He's like, Dad, watch this. I need you to do this at home. Good, boy. Good. and let's bring, I feel like a little, ooh, just clicked. Okay. Yeah, so what happened is when I brought it into uh, abduction, yeah. adduction is this way, abduction is out, it, it popped. There is a little instability there. Try it now. You're gonna do the sit thing that you always sit, do. Sit, 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 sit. No, perfect. Okay. Wow. All right, you felt the difference. Yeah, no, yeah. nothing now. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so we're gonna end there, everybody. They have some work to do, and this dog might have some hip challenges throughout its life, but at least you're gonna proactively work on it, be aware of it, not be clueless, and love your dog and enjoy your dog as much as you can. That's the main thing. And then support the dog with as much care as possible. That's specific for what they're going through and what their needs are. I hope this helped. Thanks. Thanks for watching today. Please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Thank you. Give this nice dog, you know, some loving comments. Why not, right? And that's it. Hope you learned something today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.